Hey guys, Mike here. So like the thumbnail said, we had some issues on this job, some problems, and we're going to go over them and just show you how we dealt with them. Now this was a week prior. I was told, uh, hey, the job's ready up here in this town. This was about a 40 minute ride for me. So I'm up here checking it out today just to make sure everything's ready. Everything looks good. I try to get to every single job before we pour just to check them out and make sure they're ready because honestly, you just never know what you're going to run into sometimes. So I'm getting out of the truck and I'm going over to look at the floor. This is pretty typical. I'll get out and go check it. And if it's ready, then I'll, sh I'll get my laser out and I'll shoot my grades and all that. But this is what I saw when I showed up there. And remember, this is after being told it's ready to go, it's ready to pour. So, you know, obviously the either the owner, the builder, the general contractor, whoever's in charge of the job didn't get the job ready. So that was issue number one. So here we are a week later going to pour the job and like I always do I'll get up 4 30 quarter 5 in the morning watch the weather and the weatherman says you know there's going to be a few lingering showers but everything's going to be burnt off and good to go by about 7 a.m. so we're like okay I call the batch man say send it so here we are it's 7 a.m. job <laughs> trucks are on the job and it's still raining out so we got to deal with a little bit of rain and you know we don't typically take a chance on outside pours in the rain we just know that it's just not worth it we've been caught enough in the rain that it's just a pain in the butt so I mean if we knew it was still gonna be raining we probably wouldn't have done this but we're here so now we got to deal with it so how do we deal with it well you know obviously I'm I keep checking the radar on my phone and everything's looking good for about an hour from now so it, we just have to deal with this rain for about an hour so what we know about when we pour on styrofoam like this is there's a poly vapor barrier under the styrofoam is concrete bleeds a lot when you pour on styrofoam in a vapor barrier like this so we're gonna get a bunch of bleed water already coming up to the surface after we screed it and bowl float it that's one thing we just know from pouring on this stuff all the time but when it's drizzling like this and sprinkling a little bit that even that even makes that worse so the bleed water is going to be a little bit more than expected and it's not going to evaporate anywhere near as well or if at all if it's cloudy out and it's a little drizzly out so we know we're going to have to deal with some bleed water and the way one of the ways we do that is we just add a little accelerator to the mix so we'll, we added a little accelerator to this today so we know that when we add accelerator to the mix that we have a very limited amount of time to get it down it's it's it, the concrete's hot it's about a 40 45 minute ride for the concrete to get here plus we add the accelerator on top of it so we've got just minutes to get it down and when you pour out of a conveyor like this it's probably twice as slow or it takes twice as long to get it dumped out than it would if you could just back a truck up and get it right out of the chute so we're already behind the eight ball a little bit as far as getting this down as fast as we can we can feel it right now you can tell when concrete's hot um, when you're starting to rake it around starting to screed it it, it just it has a different feeling to it you can tell it's starting to set up a little bit on you a little bit so where we know we got to get this down pretty quick because the second truck's sitting out there waiting so the, the third issue was when we when I came up here to check it a week ago, you know, obviously it wasn't ready, so I couldn't really check the grade. When we showed up this morning, I hadn't gone back and double checked it. I didn't think I really needed to, to be honest with you, this is a pretty straightforward job. I shouldn't have to come up and double check it when someone says the grade's ready. So when we got our laser out to shoot grades, the sub base, the styrofoam was like two, two and a half inches out of level. And we're supposed to pour a four inch floor in here. So, you know, we order enough concrete for something this size to pour a four inch floor. Well, luckily today, just I, I just had a gut feeling that, well, it's probably not gonna be perfect. I'm just gonna get a little extra concrete. So I had them put on two extra yards of concrete than what this would normally take at four inches. So I got a little bit of playing playing room on the on the thickness here so we got you know about three and a half over the very thinnest spot and then we got because we had to do that now we got some spots that are in the fives 
you know, five, five and a quarter, a couple five and a halves. So we know we're going to be borderline and we're just barely going to have enough concrete to do this. So we're hoping we're not going to run short. Now after we got this first truck dumped, we're right about at the halfway mark. Um, right, where, right where Luke and Darren are, are screeding this down, you can see that little area that didn't quite come to meet the, the other area there on the left. That's a small part that we don't have that, that's halfway. So we're getting the second truck backed up here. Again, the access isn't that great here. Um, and they got extra tall walls. They got nine and a half foot walls here. So it makes it a little easier using the conveyor. So we're gonna use the conveyor on the second truck too. So we're dealing with a little drizzle. We're not sure if we're gonna have enough concrete and the concrete's hot. Um, this first load's setting up really fast. We, we were able to get it down with the power screed but when the concrete starts setting up fast, it's sometimes it's almost easier and quicker to just to screed it by hand and get it down. So anyway, the first truck's down. We're not quite halfway, but we're thinking, here's what I'm thinking anyway. The second half of this doesn't look quite as thick as the first half. So at this point right now, I'm still thinking, okay, we're gonna be all right. We're gonna have enough. We're gonna finish this out, but we still have a little bit of doubt. So we get the second truck mixed up. We put the bag of accelerator in him. Um, it's still misting out a little bit, but it is starting to clear a little bit. So we're pretty, we're pretty confident the weather's going to turn out okay. It's just a matter of how how fast is this stuff going to set before we get it screeded. You can see I'm magging out the the joint there where the two trucks meet because that first truck's really setting fast. kind of just pounding it together with a come along making sure it all it all looks good that way when we screed over it we won't have a little hump or a little dip right there so I'm getting my pad shot getting my edges mag to the chalk line and we're just you know we're gonna dump this second truck out all the way out just to make sure we've got enough because if we don't then we got a decision to make <laughs> Um, what do we do if we if we run out? That's what we got to decide. So I got to go up. I got to pull him ahead a little bit before we can completely dump him out. And while I'm doing that, Darren and Luke are going to strike these wet pads. You can see how hard Darren's having to push down on that first load. It's it's setting up good. Not quite enough where we can walk on it yet, but you can see he's scraping out that stuff and it's making it hard to screed. So he'll get, he'll get that little piece magged out a little better and then he can they can strike those pads and we can start getting this concrete down before it sets up too quick on us. When concrete sets up this fast, boy, it's it gets hard to screed quick. So the quicker you can get it down, the better. And if these guys don't have to stop to fill holes, that's even better. So I'm running in there. I want to make sure the holes are filled in so they can just keep going. Now the, the conveyor is in behind me there. He's moving into place because he knows we want to get the second truck dumped out. Figure out if we got enough yet or not. But since we've already started screeding this and we can tell, we can feel it's, it's firming up pretty quick. Just in a matter of minutes. You know, we got to get, we got to get this stuff down. Luckily, both these guys could screed the middle section from the outside, so we don't have to we don't have to kick screed this section. But when we move over to the left and the right, we'll have to kick screed those. Kick screeding is pretty difficult when the concrete's set, setting up fast like this. You can see we're not even going to use the power screed. We already know it's going to take longer to use the power screed when the concrete's this dry than it is to do it by hand. So we're just going to we're going to screed this side on the right by hand. Then we'll come over. We're going to move over here to the to the left where the power screed is. We'll move that, and then we'll get that bay down, and at least we'll have 
you know, 80% of this truck down and screeded. That's half the battle when the concrete's this hot. By this time now, we're probably 45 minutes or almost an hour into the job. And the rain is at least stopped. So, but you can see, look in front of these guys where we've already screeded and bull floated. There's already a little bit of bleed water on the surface. So if it would have continued to drizzle and stuff, that just that would have compounded that and made that a lot worse. But putting the accelerator in there, the accelerator helps dry up that bleed water quite a bit. So, I mean, we don't really want to have to squeegee off bleed water to get the power trowel. We want it to dry up on its own. And that's, you know, part of our thinking going in, putting that accelerator in this stuff, especially when it's raining out like that. We got that screeded. We haven't bull floated it yet, but we got it down. And here we are, trying to empty, trying to empty him out just to see if he's going to go. We're almost right at the end here where we know we're going to have enough. It's getting really, really close. So I'm looking up at him. I'm looking up at the driver, and I'm saying, Jesus, and there he goes. He goes, I'm out. And you can see the drum spinning on that truck. And when it starts spinning like that, that's it. There's no more concrete left in it. The only concrete is in the chute. And we're looking, we're going, geez, we're about two wheelbarrows short from, from knowing we have enough. So we got to make a decision. What do we do now? I'm going to go up and scrape out whatever I can out of the chute. We'll get that in there. Concrete, if I call and order another yacht of concrete right now, I know it's going to take, well, it's a 45-minute ride, number one. If he's got a truck there that's available, you know, he's got to load it get him get him on the road that's 15 20 minutes so we're over an hour to get a to get a batch uh we're over an hour to get a, a load to finish this up and that's if he even has a truck there most of the time he doesn't because all his first round is sent out to guys like me pouring floors so if i call him right now there's probably a, a hundred percent chance he doesn't even have a truck there we'll probably have to wait for one of these to get back or one back from somebody else's job before we even get a balance load. So we're thinking, now we're gonna have to deal with this a different way. We don't wanna have to wait for another load. So what we're gonna do is, I got a floor drain there. We're gonna put a floor drain in the corner. This is a basement. It's not gonna be a finished space. So having a little floor drain in the corner is not really gonna be that much of an issue. So we're just gonna, we stuck that floor drain right in the crush rock, which goes right to the drain tile. There's a drain tile right underneath the rock right in the corner so that works out pretty good it's it looks to me like he's got a, a hole in the concrete wall up there on the left where that's where his sewer line is going to run out into the septic tank so it's probably going to be kind of a utility area anyway in this back corner so we got to where we slope the concrete down we gain some concrete because it's not quite five inches thick back here now it's more like three and a half to four inches thick so we gained a little bit of concrete which which made up for those two wheelbarrows we needed in that corner so that's how we rectified that problem of running short we just made it with a with just enough concrete and you know we screeded it to slope it to that drain now i'm just kind of magging my way out so we dealt with you know some rain on this job we dealt with the hot concrete we dealt with running short which made a really easy pour a lot more difficult than it needed to. But just to show you guys that, you know, everything's not perfect every day with us. We deal with issues too. And let me know what kinds of issues you guys deal with down in the comments. That'd be kind of cool to hear. And thanks for watching, guys. We'll see you on the next one.